Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the DC fan page with this story where you can get plot synopsis and character bios. So, we are continuing our Justice League run uh, with Cosmic odyssey number three from 1989 written by jim starlin and drawn by mike mignola or mignola and so i do have a justice league playlist and you can check out books one and two in there this is a four-parter I have this this series it's um it's it's so fun so and um not only is it magnola and starlin but the letters of john workman jr whom i dearly love and he's in uh the thor run with walter samison that i'm also covering so we got this splash page right here we got Adam Strange, uh, Starfire, and is it Light Ray? I think so. In the basement storage chamber of a giant industrial complex on the planet Ron, the hiding place of the anti life doomsday device. Light Ray, what did you learn from your uh, callback to New Genesis? And Light Ray, um, sorry, this would have been Starfire who says it. And Light Ray says, the Superman and Orion team and Batman and Forger are hot on the trail of their anti-life aspects, but Green Lantern and John Jones have failed to capture their query in time. The planet Xanxi and its star system have been scorched from the heavens, Starfire. Again, uh, feel free to check out the playlist. Millions of Xanxians are dead. So she's, uh, Adam Strange has been hurt. How ghastly, says Starfire. How is Adam Strange? And Starfire answers, still unconscious. He'll be of no further help. Then it's up to us alone to stop Brunt's anti-life aspect from destroying this solar system. And Light Ray says, then let us get to it. Time draws short. And Starfire says, but we can't just leave Adam alone here, unconscious, defenseless. And Light Ray here looks at her and says, then you stay and guard against the aspect returning to activate its doomsday bomb. I'll hunt it down on my own. And Starfire says, tread carefully, Adam. Sorry, tread carefully. Adam was alone when the aspect struck him down. And Light Ray kind of overconfident says, but Adam Strange is not a god of New Genesis. I am. My powers are awesome, and I know how to use them to their fullest. And Starfire says, I hope so, pal. Love this uh, drawing here of her kind of in all black, sort of a Magnola trope here. I love just a hint of uh, showing so although this looks like her hair almost and yeah her hair i guess is super long so um and she thinks what a conceited ass but he's the only partner you've got Corey. so let's hope and here you can see obviously some kind of gaseous substances coming through say what's that on the floor <laughs> and she touches and and says some uh looks like some type of protoplasmic ooze funny i didn't notice it before i wonder where it's coming from it feels kind of oily and you can see it's coming from here kind of guiding us to this device here in fact it smells like gasoline or some other kind of petrochemical wonder what it is and behind her of course this thing has uh taken it and she's oblivious a lot of hatching right here 
and suddenly there's an explosion. You can see Adam Strange down here. Now we're in the planet Thanagar, which is where Hawkman is from. And so Orion and Superman are there, and uh, Orion says, I'm not used to skulking about like this, Kryptonian. And Superman says, it's easier than taking an entire population of Thanagar. And Orion answers back, I'm not used to doing things the easy way either. <laughs> and Superman says, well, my method found us the uh, anti-life aspects layer without any further violence. So it works for me. Make sure there's nothing there. All right. Um, and Superman continues, it's got to be held up in that heavily guarded city. And Orion says, then let us fight our way in and take it out of the game. And Superman says, you really do like doing things the hard way, don't you? <laughs> he does. Let's try it my way again. What I want you to do is to keep the city's outer fortifications busy while I sneak in and take care of the aspect. And Orion asks, how do you propose to do that? Those Senegarans have that town sealed tighter than a drum. And Superman says, only in the air and at the ground level, huh? I plan to take a different approach. And you can see him doing like a spin, like a top. And he's uh, digging. And uh, Orion says, a very strange man. Strange, but resourceful. So as Superman goes. And here's how great Magnola is. Even though this is shaded in black, you can't even see his head. You can totally tell what Superman's doing. Here's his arms, a leg here, the leg here, the cape. Just beautiful. Mignola is really starting to get on his own eventually. So this is 1989, and I believe that Hellboy comes um, within five years. So, um, so Orion says, guess it's time to begin my diversion routine. Come and uh, come and get it, gang, as he's going to go fight the Thanagarians. And so back in Ron, nothing. This complex is enormous. Thousands of places for the aspect to hide. Oh, should have gone back. It was in the your base. Ferreting it out using conventional methods could take forever. So let's try something unconventional, thinks Light Ray. Like altering my visual perceptions beyond their normal range. I think the electromagnetic spectrum might be appropriate. And then he says, that did it. Trace eman emanations running along the floor. A glowing path leading to my enemy. So, he continues here. I knew anything as powerful as the anti-life aspect had to, to leave some type of spore that my special abilities could track. These Photonic power certainly do comes in handy at times. Wait, I've already been down this hall. It leads to the chamber where I left Starfire and Adam Strange. And so you can see Starfire on the floor and Adam Strange is still there. Damnation! My enemy obviously doubled back and caught Corey unawares. Chances are it's still about. I best keep this anti-life containment weapon that Darkseid gave me at the ready. There's no telling what it will try. And suddenly, it's hit. And I'm knocking him down, and there goes the uh, weapon Darkseid gave him. Got to, and he's trying to, but um, it throws so the thing and destroys it. By the Elder Gods, what is it? And here's the uh, um, the thing. Magnola's so good. Simple shapes, simple just cubes, just cubes building. Um, God, he, it's beautiful. And so back to Thanagar, there goes Superman. So uh, he says, from the number of troops my x-ray vision reveals massed around the building, I'd say this is the anti-life, um, anti-life's aspects stronghold again just the blacks oh, it's just beautiful sounds like orion is keeping them pretty busy upstairs well 
it at least masks the noise of my entrance. Now, let's see what my x-ray vision can turn up inside here. Nothing in the basement. Maybe below the basement. What have we here? It fits the description of that doomsday device that destroyed Zanshi. But no sign of the aspect. So, it's underneath Superman's, uh, the floor. And so, off he goes. Again, beautiful. Just all black. Showing, um, I don't know... You know, it's it's kind of funny. Art styles just develop over time, but what a joy when Mike Mignola just figured out, you know, I'm just going to black things. It's it's amazing. Him and Frank Miller, just wow. Um, and I love John Workman's um, lettering here. So the monster's got to be around somewhere. Well, I'm sure it'll show up once I start dismant dismantling its little science project. So you can see as Superman comes down here. And now over here, I wonder what type of host body that Thanagaria anti-life aspect has adopted. Huh? Looks like I'm about to find out, aren't I? Coming from beneath the floor. And so this thing comes right through, which is right here. I should have probed deeper with my x-ray vision. Great vertical panel here. Holy smoke, he's a big one, says Superman. God, I just, I love comic books, especially when they're um, very well done. Um, and I think this series is very underrated. I don't think people um, rate it as high. Um, and uh, I like it. I I think it's it's a wonderful series here. And so it punches Superman. I love that. Gabrak, I love, like I said, I absolutely love John Workman Jr. And so now we're back to Ron. Although it doesn't tell us, obviously, Light Race here. So um, the aspect has obviously taken on the host body of some type of protoplasmic shape changer. Well, let's see how it fares against one of my photonic blasts. It's flowing down a floor grate by the stars, but it moves quickly. I wonder why these guys don't just grab, I don't know, the machine and just take it somewhere out of, you know, I don't know. Um, it's going to be tough getting a clear shot at it. Now, where could it have escaped to? And then it hits him from behind. I love that. Kaploosh. Also, just to remind people, this series is four parts, but it's really double-sized. It's really sort of eight issues because um, they were, um, I think they're 40, 40 plus pages. So, so here back, this thing is kicking uh, Superman away. And now back in Ron, um, it will, it will take more than a couple of petty sneak attacks to keep down a Gen a Genetian warrior monster as he shoots at it. Now we'll see. It's pulled its disappearing act again. Where and the sun it comes from below and hits him and then hits him again. And here Superman's getting hit. As well, so we're having like the two things sort of going, and so he knocks Light Ray and it's looking at the machine and he's making sure Light Ray is out, so he's gonna go in there and hits the timer 120. And suddenly, we see now, um, Starfire's eyes, and now we have a Superman again as this machine's going to get him. And so, you see that the countdown and the, and the creature's going away. And Starfire is going to grab um, Adam Strange. Which is going to go grab Light Ray. So, probably getting them safe. And now, the creature, the other, the robot here, grabs um, Superman. And sees, again, the same uh, device. And it's going to grab it. And Starfire says, you haven't won. Not yet. And here you can see the timer. Nor will you... Sorry, nor will you if I have anything to say about it. By the way, um, real quick before I continue this, uh, 
other creatures probably wouldn't have numbers that quite look like this. I love in the movie Predator that the alien Predator had a different thing, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger was still able to uh, deduct that it was a um, a countdown, but um, they wouldn't they wouldn't use numbers that look quite like this. So you don't really think you can tag me with the same trick twice, do you? As she as he throws that machine at them. So now Superman um, goes through and punches this one. By the stars, this creature moves like grease lightning. It dodges my power blast with an eerie ease and grace, which is exactly what I expect it to do. Unless I'm, unless I'm terribly mistaken. She's going to say mistaken, but he, she gets cut off and she screams. So Jim Starlin, of course, is the um, writer of um, a lot of really cool stuff. I'm covering a Batman run of his. Um, but he also did um, Infinity Gauntlet and had an incredible run on the Silver Surfer. So... All right, Earth, Moose Jaw, Arizona. And so here's Forager. The computer records and the folks in town say that the Butte is where the scientific equipment of the late Joe Bester ordered was delivered, Forager. And uh, Forager says that we go in to check it out once it gets dark. And so you can see Batman over here. He sort of blends... Um, if this anti-life aspect plays true to form, it'll be habiting a host body. Joe's best, Joe Bester's body would be my guess, says Forger, so that it could purchase the equipment it needed. And Batman says, I don't think so. If I had a selection of bodies to pick from, I'd choose something more powerful than a dead Gotham City policeman. You sound like you know something I don't. And Batman says, I stopped a huge uh, apocalypse in Gotham sewers. Used his own neutralizer, which was more powerful than I'd expect. Blew a hole clean through him, but Darkseid breeds them tough. He was still breathing when I left him. He'd be my choice. And so here, you, you can see it here, kind of oozing that uh, thing. Um, man, Magnola. Again, finding that uh, new style. So, Superman here. Uh, Sorry, pal. You had your chance to get your licks in. It's my turn up at bat. And so, boom. And then that thing hits him back. And then Superman hits back. Great. I absolutely love this uh, panel here. Love it. God, he's such a... Just creating these simple... Um. And I love a little bit of that uh, dry brush. He is, I, do, I don't remember who his inker is, um, but he's not inking himself, Magnola. And so Superman grabs it here and then tosses it. Time to say goodnight, Greasy, um, and uh, hits him. Um, if you don't know what that is, I think it's from the 60s with George Burns and his wife. Um, Gracie, they had a show and every, uh, every night, um, it would end with say goodnight, Gracie. And she would say goodnight, Gracie. So it was kind of a running, uh, joke back in the day. So Superman thinks here, I have to admit this creature has grit, even though blinded, it continues to put up a fight best to put it out of its misery. Now to see how well Darkseid's Aspect Catcher works. And you can see here with the Kirby dots here. And Superman as he aims it toward it. The air is filled with an acidity stench. And, the, and charged with a power the man of steel can sense deep within his bones. With the mere pull of a trigger, Superman has unleashed a mysterious cosmic force he knows he'll never understand. An unnerving experience. And so he continues here. But one that achieves desired results. So boom, 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 boom. And it's fallen. I can feel 
the black power straining to escape the weapon's containment chamber. But it will hold. Darkseid builds his little toys well. And speaking of toys, wouldn't be smart to leave the Aspect's doomsday device lying about. Never can tell who might stumble upon it. But a little hit heat vision will solve the problem, so Superman begins to melt it. This is Superman calling New Genesis. Yes, sir, the Aspect has been captured, and it's doomsday device neutralized. Oh, how Superman doesn't speak like that. Yes, sir. All right. It looks like this round goes to the good guy. What was that? That's right, sir. I'll be collecting Orion and returning to New Genesis presently. So, one star system saved, another lost. How will it end, Darkseid? So, Superman was talking to High Father. Of course, we got Darkseid and the demon. Badly, if the anti-life entity is able to implode another of its targeted solar system, that will that will cause the Milky Way to collapse in itself, creating the chaos needed for the entity to enter our reality in its entirety. And Darkseid continues here, I don't intend to allow that to happen, High Father. That is why I suggest we immediately switch to the alternative plan we've spoken of. You mean, says High Father, yes, says Darkseid. The time has come for us to face the anti-life entity head on. We must take the offensive to invade its realm. And High Father says, but there are monumental risks involved with that endeavor. None that I cannot overcome, says Darkseid. No, this plan requires more thought before we act on it. So, High Father says no. But here we see Darkseid smiling, so you know he's going to. Yes, go off and contemplate our predicament, you old fool. You'll end up deciding to go along with my scheme. What other choice have you? And he says, none. And that will be your undoing. For in saving the universe from the anti-life entity, I will gain the power I need to realize all my darkest dreams. So Darkseid is always planning. I love all these teeth. Um, so, and so, um, High Father walks on his own. Do I dare go along with my lifelong enemy's plans? That course is fraught with dangers, both seen and hidden. Terrible dangers. Darkseid claims he can challenge the entity's might by trapping by uh tapping into Etrigan's connection to the seemingly seemingly infinite mystical wells of power but if he's wrong the entire universe could be annihilated worse yet though is the possibility that he's right the thought of evil dark side with access to such might is truly terrifying but he might be correct about our defenders not being able to save the day. Whatever choice I make puts the stars in peril. And someone off panel here says, not necessarily. And of course, he wasn't speaking out loud. He was thinking, but someone could hear his thoughts. And High Father says, who? And of course, you. I love how they, they, uh, they use that uh, trope. You. <laughs> I know of you. You're, and so we're not being revealed here, but we can see uh, yellow gloves here. So, a friend of Batman's. He asked me to keep an eye on Darkseid, and it did. And it is well he did, for I know, for I now perceive the pattern of the villain's actions. Now recognize the mischief of his plans. And then High Father says, Then you must also know of a way to thwart his plot and still rescue the universe. And he says, Yes, we must let Darkseid have his way. And High Father says, What? And then we're back in Ron here. And Light Ray's like, Oh, my head, what happened? Oh, yes, yeah, Starfire, where is she? How much time do we have left? And of course, that entity has her here, and we see like 15 seconds, or is it 15 minutes? Um, no, it's 15 seconds here. So he's got her, and you can see the countdown. Now we're back in um, uh, Thanagar, and you can see Superman coming uh, from underneath the ground, and suddenly he looks and says, Oh my God, just with such um, despair. 
And here, Orion has absolutely decimated everybody. And Superman's like, it can't be. It just can't. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at this. What an absolute beautiful composition by Mike Mignola. Or Mignola. Depe I, uh, I say it kind of how it's spelled. That's why I say it the way I do. But, of course, it may be different. So, please forgive me. Um, it, oh, sorry, going back to it. That that's when I was younger, before the internet and everything. That's just how I assumed it was. I pronounced it the way I saw it. So I I I know that he pronounces it Mignola, but I I just say Mignola because that's that's how it's spelled. So, all right. So again, Superman is just. Um, beside himself, and look at all of the Thanagarians, all the Hawkmen. So this one here was something impaled. And so Superman says, what happened here? And Orion says, you asked for a diversion, so I made one. Sure, no one interfered. Uh, so, uh, sorry. So I made sure no one interfered in your battle with the Antholife aspect. And he just keeps looking. So many dead. Why? Why? He screams. I was fighting to save my galaxy. I don't play around with such high stakes involved. Just. <laughs> and to think um, that uh, Orion ends up joining the Justice League in Grant Morrison's run. But they were innocent puppets in the thrall of the aspect. There were no, they, they were victims, not villains. And Orion snaps back. There are no innocent victims in war, Kryptonian. Only survivors and the dead. And so Superman is like, you've got it all figured out, don't you? Again, looking back at them. Um, savage platitudes sprinkled over the slaughtered. And he looks. A warrior's honor excuses all, right? Wrong! And so he punches Orion. We could have beaten the aspect without this senseless massacre. Always the Boy Scout, Superman. Um... But, you know, the way Superman is done, man, I, I agree with him. He, he's just not that way. You're nothing but a cold-blooded murderer, Orion. And he's, and Orion says, that may well be true, but you are a fool. I'm also covering the Orion uh, series by Walter Simonson. Um, I do have a playlist for that as well. I can't understand how you've lasted as long as you have. And so Orion gets on his little uh, get-up. Return to New Genesis. Are you coming? He says, no. There are dead to be buried. So Superman's going to bury everybody here. And so uh, Light Ray goes in. Corey, Corey, where are you? And he's in these uh, surprise here. By the Elder Gods. And um, he sees the aspect. Corey. The timer, the doomsday device is about to, as you can see the countdown going down. No, he um, uses his power. And Corey says, Light Ray, you fool, get out of here. And she um, um, goes away, causing a burning. And he, and he goes, a what? Another one of her hitting, another uh, wonderful panel, sorry or hitting him there. And suddenly you see the whole thing explode. And Light Ray says, we're not dead. What happened amidst all this destruction here? And here's Adam Strange here. Oh, Mignola. Just, I'm so jealous. Every time I see him, his stuff, I just want to go draw. So, um, so... Um, Starfire says, the Antolife aspect exploded and destroyed the Doomsday Bomb. How? And what was that thing? And she says, my guess is that it was a little known native life form of Ron, which is why Adam Strange was taken out before either of us. The creature's petroleum scent caused me to suspect its potential combustibility. I figured its shape-changing ability denoted the unstable mo ah, molecular structure. But when I tried to confirm this theory with a power blast, the creature proved just 
too fast for me to get uh, a beat on it. So I decided to let the aspect get me in its clutches and let my fiery flight emissions do the rest. And so Light Ray says, but I wonder if you'd been wrong about its fatality. Well, we'd be atomized by now. So she's got a great point. But we aren't, and the lady was right on the money. Thank you, Starfire. You saved Ron. All in a day's work, Mr. Strange. I think I'm going to be ill, says uh, Light Ray. I wonder how the other teams are doing. All right, I suppose. Or we'd know about it by now. And uh, Adam says, not necessarily. We wouldn't experience the effects of Soul's destruction for another year unless the animator explosions spread faster than the speed of meaning light what's that it's got to be the anti life aspect in its pure form after it and so off it goes no good the aspect is uh reaching faster than light speed that's not possible it's gone well unless it warped itself can we track it somehow no it didn't leave any emission trail my spectrum vision seems to uh able to pick up that means it could be anywhere. I best report our latest development back to New Genesis. And so here is Etrigan and Darkseid. That leaves only Earth in jeopardy, Etrigan. Yet our prospects for success looks really bleak, especially with that Ran anti life aspect running loose. And the demon says, Should not we expect the Azanshi aspect? I doubt it. It was most likely destroyed along with that star system. But I may well be wrong even about that, which is all the more reason for us not to depend on Batman and Forger saving your world. Would not... Uh, sorry, uh, the demon speaks like in a riddle. Would not be our natural course to their uh, meager numbers we reinforce? And Darkseid says, no time. The the, uh, the universe only hope lies with you and me, striking at the very heart of our enemy's realm. And uh, you can see here Darkseid grabbing the demon. My, con my controlling the power I can tap from you will be our salvation. We can enslave the anti-life entity. I've gone over the calculations dozens of times. We can succeed. You can trust me in this matter. And the demon's like, fa. Kind of uh, slapping the hand away. He walks away. To trust you, I'd be a fool. For dark side, you are a ghoul. My eldritch sense do decry that you are more monster than I. And dark side says, true. But even one whose soul is as foul as mine can be used to do good. Fate sometimes plays strange tricks at Trigan. You yourself wear no halo or wings, but have been chosen to save a galaxy from something far worse than death. It is the ultimate jest, is it not, says Darkseid. The destiny of the very stars depend on two twisted monsters such as ourselves. Ironic, but the truth surely you must sense this also. And Etrigan says, yes, alas, I really do. Your words unfortunately ring true. And so, a little bit closer here to his face here. Few options offered in this game. Meager picking, such a shame. Well, tis not the first time I've dealt with the devil. Life must sometimes be played on that base level. So, back to Earth in Arizona. Batman says, are you ready? Forger says, yes. Then let's do it. My Mignola does these absolutely simple drawings that just look spectacular i'm so jealous of him so we got a boom tube in new genesis and um green lantern and john jones have returned with orion and orion says i picked up these two sorry souls on my way though i'm not sure why i bothered <laughs> welcome home orion says hi father be kind, my son. They gave their best to our cause. We can ask no more than that from them. And uh, Green Lantern, John Stewart, is like, No, High Father Orion's right. I blew it, and a star system died. 
I wanted to hog all the glory and, po and prove myself and millions perished as he walks away. I thought I could do it all. The, I thought myself a real hotshot. I did the same thing on Earth, but I only leveled one city there. Now the whole Zanshi star system gone and it's all my stupid overconfident fault. As you can see him walking further and further away. I think you had better keep an eye on your friend, John Jones. And, um, sorry, the comma. Um, so he's asking the Martian Manhunter to keep an eye on Green Lantern. And he's like, me, all right. And so Orion says, so what's been taking place on this front? And Highfather explains to him, Darkseid proposes a dangerous solution to our problems. But I've decided we dare not go along with this mad scheme. The perils involved in this enterprise are too great to even consider. And so we've got um, a device strapped on the demon here. Uh, Dark side, this is just awesome. He's going to probably give Dark side the strength. So all systems stand ready, Etrigan. Are you prepared for what lies ahead? And Etrigan says... I'm ready with my final breath for a face-to-face -face with icy death. And Darkseid says, we'll take a route radically different from that which Metron chose. And so Darkseid says, I shall not be so careless as to allow the anti-life entity another egress from its dark realm. We shall contain and conquer, he says. Etrigan, you are about to savor realities even beyond the wide range of your experience. We step beyond mere immortality into the sphere of the infinite. With the flip of this switch, we become a cosmic force. And you can see Darkseid pressing the button there. Why? What do you mean? What you suggest is obscene. I, and all of a sudden, um, things go out and all is white here. And, uh... Darkseid and Etrigan are merging here. What a wonderful, wonderful piece here. And so here is that dark life entity. Stand ready, demon. Witness now how true gods do battle. Oh, Darkseid. You know, I will say this. Jack Kirby does know how to create characters. And so High Father gets there and he goes, By the source, we are too late. Darkseid has entered the realm of the anti life with Etrigan. The mad fool, his blinded vision has driven him to the ultimate gamble. Only the heavens know what damage or evil he'll cause there. And here, only the heavens and I know, High Father. And Oran says, Who? And High Father says, he is the one I told you of, Orion. And I would say, if I would, I haven't read this in forever, so I would say this is Dr. Fate because of the yellow gloves. Um, although he speaks perhaps like the Spectre, the Spectre has green gloves. So I will assume this is Dr. Fate. Um, the one who may still save this day, but only with your help. You can come with me and... A journey to the unknown realities and face unbelievable perils. Oh, sorry. Orion had asked, what can we do? And then he answered all that. So, grasp my hands and you may not survive the experience, but ref but to refuse my aid would be even worse. So, help me and you can die. But if you don't help me, it's going to be worse. So, love it. And so, he takes them and uh, they disappear. And so, um, suddenly you see this entity appear. And here's Earth. All right. All is ready. I love how they have the town sign right here. In a cavern deep within the bowels of the Butte. And so, here's that uh, creature here. Then the time has come to detonate the stellar disruptors. Let the first day of anti-life begin within this plane. And so, the 122nd delayed primer has been activated. Excellent. 
So dies the Milky Way galaxy and all who live within it. Praise the entity. Praise the end to life. And it begins this dreaded countdown. Boom. So, these, like I said, these are double-sized. So, we have reached the end, finally, of Cosmic Odyssey number three. We got one more to go. Um, Jim Starlin is the writer. Mike Mignola is the pencils. I completely forgot who the inker is. But feel free to check out that uh, DC uh, site. You can get everything. So... Um, it's, it's really good. I, I like it and I like Magnola. So, um, yeah. And I, and I like Starlin too. So, um, like and subscribe and I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.